While design menus can play a large role in efficiency for your servers, in this video we will take a look at how to build great menus by using some tips and tricks and best practices. Select an existing menu to make edits to it, or to create a new menu, select Set up another menu design code. The first thing you are asked is to give this menu a code. Then go ahead and click Enter on your keyboard. The next thing you will be asked is which template you'd like to copy from. So if you have a menu template in the system that's blank, you can copy from that, such as our standard blank menu templates, or choose a menu that's very similar that you'd like to copy from. Click the magnifying glass to select another template, or click Enter on your keyboard to use the default menu. The reason it asks you if you'd like to copy a menu instead of just creating one from a completely blank slate is all of the buttons at the very bottom, such as Void, Quantity, Home, Next Order, and Send are already there for you, and they will be consistent with the rest of your menus. When you copy a menu, it copies the menu description. So the first thing you will want to do is make sure you update that description so it reflects your menu. We highly suggest refraining from setting up menus by year. For example, Appetizers 2020. Instead, maintain one master menu or a rotating set of menus to make it easier to swap one out for the other. This is your menu design screen. On the left is a preview of what your menu will look like as well as where you will design your menu layout and functionality. On the right hand side, you will have all the things you can do to this menu. The POS item box contains all of the point of sale items you can sell to your clients. The Functions box contains the different functions you can apply to buttons such as Void, Next, and Send Order, as well as Settlement and Discount options, and many more. The Menus box contains all of your menus which you can link as buttons in a menu. However, I've got another trick I'm going to show you later on in this video. To place items on the menu, the first thing you'll want to do is find the POS item you want to add to your menu. You can scroll through the list of items or use the search bar by typing in the first few characters and clicking enter on your keyboard. Then go ahead and select the item and click on the button you'd like to add that item to. And go ahead and add all the remaining items to your menu. Note that the item will continue to be selected until you click that cancel button. So once you're done adding your items, make sure you click cancel. You can make different menus to contain specific items, for example, a beer menu, an appetizer menu, a lunchtime special menu, like you see here. Later in this video, I'll show you a quick trick on how to quickly access multiple menus from the POS screen. So when building your menus, it's best to make focus menus and your servers will be able to quickly select the specific menu with the specific menu items that they need access to. If you want to edit the details for a button, click on that button and this will launch the Edit Menu button screen, where you can go ahead and make your adjustments accordingly, and then click OK. Functions are added to a menu the same way that we add POS items. The Edit Menu button screen will be different based on the function you are adding to the menu, so you want to make sure you configure all of the applicable settings for that function. Once you have configured the button settings, click OK to save. Remember that function buttons will have different edit menu settings. So depending on the function you add, configure those settings accordingly. What you can do to further organize your menu is add headers to the buttons at the top of the menu to note what kind of items are below it. To add a header, click on the button and ensure the function is set to NA, not used. Then in description 1 and 2, type in the header. For example, you can add header buttons for sandwiches, soups, and salads to organize your lunch special menu. You can add textiles by making all the characters in the button description capital letters or by adding underlined and or italics. Textiles can help buttons stand out, so they might be handy to use for buttons like the menu header buttons. There are two ways to change the color of a button. The first way is to choose the color via the drop-down on the main menu design screen. Then, click on the button or buttons that you'd like to apply that color to. The color will continue to apply until you click that cancel button. The second way to change the color of a button is to click on the button and use the background drop-down to select the color. 
When adding color to a menu, avoid using too many different colors as it can actually make it more difficult for your service to find the items they are looking for. If you do like to use color, we recommend grouping similar items together using a color scheme. You might find after adding all of your items to the menu that you don't have enough buttons for the rest of your items. What you can do in this case is split a button. To split a button, click on the button you wish to split. Then click Split Button. Select the desired split, then click Split It. If you do split a button, we recommend using shorter button descriptions for those smaller buttons. If you split a button by mistake or just don't want that button split anymore, click Rejoin Button, then select the button you'd like to rejoin. Then click Cancel. If you need to move buttons around, click Move Button, then select the button you'd like to move and the new location you'd like to move it to. Placement of buttons is key. For example, it can be helpful to put the most popular and most used items near the top of the menu and work downwards. Consistency is key. Follow the same layout style for all your menus to make it that much easier for your servers to use and navigate. To remove an item from the menu, search for not used in the functions box. Then select not used and click on the button you'd like to remove. In the pop-up, click yes. Then click cancel. It is important to regularly maintain your menus and remove any items or buttons that are no longer available or applicable to this menu. Instead of linking to a menu within a menu, the display order menu tabs feature allows you to create a customized menu display bar in addition to your main menu tabs. Select the desired menus from the left-hand pane and add them to the right pane by double-clicking on it, clicking on it, then clicking the arrow, or select a range of menus by holding down the shift key on your keyboard and clicking the arrow. These menus will always appear in the display order menu tab at the start of a chip and will be locked to the screen. The menus will be displayed left to right in the display order menu tab based on the order from top to bottom in the right hand pane. To remove the menu from this list, simply double click it. Move multiple menu tabs at one time. If flagged, when you select the left or right arrow to view more menus on the chip entry screen, it will move a full group of menus and the number of menus will be dependent on your screen resolution. If not flagged, when you select the left or right arrow, it will move one menu at a time. Once you have finished configuring the menu tabs, click OK. As you go along and before you finalize your menu, Take advantage of using the test button to view and test your menu design. Here you can check out the buttons and also see the display order menu tabs. Click exit to close out of that preview. Now that you've created, edited, and reviewed your menu, don't forget to click OK to save your changes. You do have the option to save as where you can enter a new menu code to use this menu design as a template for another menu. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more how-to videos and don't forget to subscribe.